Hey there, this is Beth, the Sweet Urban Living Lady, and I love using essential oils around my home, but not everybody likes essential oils, but they still wanna get the benefits of using their diffusers. And what I wanna show you today as I talk to you about essential oils and diffusers is how you can get the benefits of diffusers without using essential oils or by using very little essential oils. And the reason this is important is because some people are so sensitive to the smell of our essential oils that they end up investing into, if they buy the essential oils, they buy the diffusers, and then they find that they can't use them because it gives them a headache. Well, there's something that we call being nose blind um, that really does happen. We become oversensitized to the smell. It's either too much or it's, and it causes us to be sensitized with where we have ill effects or not good effects, or we just get to the point where we can't smell them any longer and they're not really doing any good. And then um, as time goes on, we might start to feel, you know, bad, feel the headaches. One of the issues is that if you're sensitive to the smell of essential oils, you've paid all this money, right? But what good is it doing if you're nose blind or you're oversensitized to the smell of the essential oils? How can you still get benefit? Well, I have a tip on how you can use your diffusers either with no essential oils or how you can use um, different methods of getting good smells into the air or good products into the air that can help you because one of the reasons we use essential oils is because they make us feel good. Some essential oils are calming, some are uplifting, and when we put them in a diffuser and that starts going into the air, we start to feel better. But not so if you don't like essential oils because they give you a headache or make you feel yucky. Some people, you know, like my mother and my, one of my daughters both would get these terrible headaches. They absolutely hate the smell of lavender. And so you're going, how can anybody hate lavender? But if you, if a smell of a particular essential oil makes you feel bad, then you know that's not something you want to use. So I'm going to be doing a series called Myths and Myth Conceptions About Oils. And one of the myths and misconceptions about oils is that if um, you have an adverse reaction, such as a headache or something like that, you should keep using that essential oil. And that's not true. That is not true. If you have an adverse reaction, such as a headache, or it makes you feel nauseous or anything like that, that's your body telling you not to use that essential oil. So that's another series. Let's talk about how you can use what you've invested in. And as you see here, I have invested in several different essential uh, oil diffusers. And the reason why is because I like them, they're pretty, I want them in different rooms of the house and things like that. But how can you use it? How can we use it if we don't like the smell of essential oils? Or how can we use essential oils just a little bit at a time so that we're getting the benefit? So let's talk about that. My number one way is to use colloidal silver. Now, I have um, a big bottle of colloidal silver because I use a lot of it, and so I have it on hand. It's something that we can take internally um, during the winter months when we're fighting viruses, bacteria, whatever it is that comes around and we wanna get rid of, colloidal silver is great for that. I also have started putting it in my diffusers, just like water. It's very thin, especially this brand, the Nature Sunshine brand. The particles of silver are so small, they're nano-sized. And nano-sized is itsy bitsy 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 tiny tiny. So the good news is, is they're not going to cause problems of buildup if you take it internally. And if you use it in your diffuser, it's thin like water. And so you can do that. One of the things you would do is you would just take your colloidal silver, pour it into the, pour it into your reservoir and run your, diffuser just like that. That's one way of using your diffuser and not wasting your money as you're getting 
the good properties of the colloidal silver into the air. They're scrubbing the air of microbes and things like that. And when we breathe it in, it's good for us too. My second recommendation for using diffusers without essential oils is to actually use what we call Bach flower remedies or flower remedies. Now, Dr. Edward Bach is who came up with flower remedies. He's the one who discovered them um, and invented them, so to speak. And so that's why we call them Bach flower remedies many times, but different companies make flower, um, flower essence blends or flower essence remedies, and we can use these flower remedies in our diffusers as well. And we get the benefit of that too. You'll take your uh, diffuser, you'll put your water in, and then you'll put whatever Bach flower remedy you choose, you'll drop in one or two drops. It'll diffuse into the air just not like essential oils will, and it will have a great effect. Unlike our essential oils though, that have a fragrance, our Bach flower remedies don't have a fragrance if they do, it's just really mild, but it's not the essential oil, it's the brandy or alcohol or whatever base that they're preserved in that gives them the smell. So you're not even really gonna smell this. It's gonna diffuse in the air with no issue. So once you put your drops in, you close up your diffuser, and you turn it on, and there you go. So let me just share the four Bach flower remedies that I did bring up out to talk about are beach. This is one that maybe someone is having a little bit of issues with being tolerant. Like I'm thinking about, you know, when kids are young and maybe they're home for the holidays and people are starting to get, you know, on each other's nerves or whatever it may be. It could be grownups, could be kids, whatever the, the situation, we can all be a little intolerant sometimes and people can get on our nerves. And so beach is a really good Bach flower remedy for that. I also pulled out oak. Oak is really good when you need endurance. This is a great one when, hey, you've got a job to do, you've been doing it, you're kind of tired, and you're just gonna keep on plugging on, going, 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 but you still need a little bit more endurance to help you through. The next one I pulled out was holly. Now, holly is also for that kind of, with, I'm gonna use the word irritation, but it's not really for irritation so much as anger, um, sometimes jealousy. So this is a great one like um, when someone brings a new puppy into the home or a new baby home from the hospital or something like that and siblings, whether puppy siblings or cat siblings or people siblings, get jealous or angry, holly is really good. We use holly when there's an outward uh, expression of anger. We call this one the hit, hate, hurt. When there's, you don't have to hit, but young children will often hit or dogs will often nip. It's an outward movement of irritation, an outward movement of anger. Whereas beach, this is the person, they may be more like grumbling under their breath or something like that. And so it's not an outward, it's more of an internal. It's not that they won't say something out loud, but a lot of times it's still just kind of like, a, we call it being beachy. And then the next one I pulled out to share about was olive. And olive is really good for those who are so exhausted. They're mentally exhausted, physically exhausted, spiritually exhausted. They're just exhausted and you need more energy. So instead of reaching for energy drinks, reach for olive. I would recommend taking it internally, all of these, as well as putting them in the diffuser. Another tip I have about using your diffusers, but with your essential oils, is make sure you get diffusers that have timers on them. This diffuser and this diffuser both have timer settings. And this allows me to set these diffusers up to, to, to diffuse for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, 
um, or two hours or something like that at a time. So they're clearly seen on this one. Now this particular one has what we call an intermittent diffuser. So when you push the buttons on this one right down here, if you push it a couple of times, instead of doing a steady stream, it releases a little bit of essential oils at a time. Now, if you're highly sensitive to the essential oils, I would really recommend getting a diffuser or, may, or checking your diffuser and see if it's got a timer for like 30 minutes or an hour. Remember when I talked about being nose blind? That's a real thing. And so by having a diffuser that has a timer setting with just a 30 minute timer, it'll cut off and it'll keep someone from being so sensitized. Another thing that I recommend is that you not use a lot of drops of essential oil in your water. So different uh, essential oil reservoirs will be different sizes. This one has a tiny tank. This one has a much bigger tank. And so you can see that I could use more drops of essential oil on this one, whereas I would wanna use fewer in this one. This one also has a tiny tank. It looks large, but it's got a tiny tank. So a, a tiny reservoir is going to be helpful because one, if, you, if it doesn't have a timer, it will eventually run out, especially if you use a little bit less water. So that's another tip. Use less water. If you don't have a diffuser with a timer, then don't fill it all the way up. And make sure you only use a few drops of essential oil in a little bit of water. That way, if it doesn't have a timer, it'll cut out sooner and it won't oversensitize you. Now there are times when you want to have your diffuser running for longer periods of time. We do that when we wanna clean a room, we wanna clean the air. We might run it for the two or three hours, but we tend to only tolerate the diffuser running for about 30 minutes at a time before we become nose blind, before we start to get sensitized. And that's true for anyone, whether or not the essential oils give you a headache or bother you in some other way, no matter what, we really don't need to have the diffuser going for long periods of time for ourselves. If we're cleansing the air, if it's a really large room, that's a different situation. Just make sure you're not sitting right next to that diffuser <laughs> the whole time. If you are using essential oils, remember we're only going to use a few essential oils, but we want to blend them. So sometimes people will take and they'll, let's say lavender, They'll grab their lavender bottle and they'll open up their reservoir and they'll put in like 10, 20 drops. And they're gonna, and then they're like, oh wow, that's really bothering me. Um, people who tend to be bothered by the smells though may use it, you know, one or two drops and then go, hey, that's just too much. So instead of just using one essential oil, you want to create a blend. And essential oils come in what we call notes. We have top notes middle notes and low notes. Just like in music, you have the instruments that play the high sounds, like the flute, you have the instruments that play the middle sounds, like the trumpet, and you have the uh, instruments that play the low sounds, like the tuba. And so whatever that equates with you, however you can think of that to help you understand how to make your blends, is you have your top notes like your citruses. I have lemon. This is a top note. It dissipates quickly. It's great for cleaning stuff. A lot of our cleaning products on the shelves today have lemon in them, and I use lemon all the time because it d does dissipate. It doesn't tend to cause issues with uh, people being sensitive to it as much as some of our others. Then you have, so pine would be a middle. Anything that has like needles or leaves, we tend to think of um, as being middle. Some of our flowers like lavender are a blend between top and middle. So I put lavender in the middle, whereas citrus is, um, and this lemon is a top note. Uh, Clementine, I love this brand. This is Remnant Remedy. And uh, this is an artisan essential oil company. Remnant Remedy 
Pure Chemin Essential Oils is an artisan company. It's not a big company. And I know the person personally who makes these and I really love this clementine, but clementine is a citrus, so it's going to dissipate quickly. And then we have frankincense and cedarwood. Now frankincense or cedarwood are going to be uh, middle to low. Sandalwood is low. Things that have like barks and stems and are grounding, we can consider those to be bottom notes or low notes. What I would wanna do is I would wanna take one from each category to make a blend. I might use two drops of my low note, one drop of my middle note, and two drops of my high note in my reservoir. And the reason I do that is because the low notes are gonna help um, stabilize everything, and the high notes are gonna dissipate quickly. So that's just another tip on how you can use your diffuser and maybe not be oversensitized. Now, if you do have, just a, a disclaimer and a clarity, if you are sensitive to any of these and they cause you ill effects, it, putting them in a blend may or may not make a difference for you. There are some oils like Ylang Ylang. It's not one of my favorites um, but blended together, it smells lovely. So when I put it with other oils in a blend, I love the way it smells, but by itself, it's not my favorite. It doesn't make me sick, it doesn't give me a headache, it's just not something I like, but put together, wonderful. I wanted to show you another way that you can diffuse because some people are going, well, I don't have a diffuser. These are kind of expensive. I don't know if I want to invest, you know, 20, 30, $40 because some of them can be very expensive, especially if they have the timer. You can get less expensive. This is what we call an oil burner diffuser. You see here, I have a little tea light that goes right here. I would take and I would pour some water in the reservoir and I would fill it up and then I would do the same thing. If you're a sensitive to essential oils, create a blend. You can use a drop, two drops of lemon. Let's do, lemon and pine go together well. Let's do that. It's gonna smell like cleaning supplies in here. And I will bottom it out with, um, let's do frankincense because the other one I have out is cedar wood. That's a lot of, so we would just make sure, we, you know, we would light our tea light, put it in, put it in a safe place. If you have kids, uh, animals running around that would bump, this may not be a good idea. It's a great idea at bath time though, that you can set around on your bathtub when you're, you know, reading your book, whatever that is, your bath time not the kids bath time. So I have put my essential oils in here, but I can still put the 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 holly in here. Well, let's say I've gotten a little angry at somebody. I can put a drop of holly in there and I can also use my colloidal silver in here if I would like to because the um the heat from the candle is going to diffuse the essential oils and the colloidal silver and the flower remedies into the air. Another way that I use essential oils or colloidal silver or Bach flower remedies and get them into the air is by putting them on a stove top. So for the stove top diffusion method, we still need some heat. And one of the things I started doing many years back is I started taking especially in the winter time. I started taking the peels from my oranges or tangerines or leftover slice it. I slice up a little bit of um, apple, whatever, lemon, oranges, tangerines, things like that. And I put it in some water and I would just turn my stove top on very low. Now this particular oven, I have a keep warm. So I would actually put it on my warming center because it's even lower than my lowest setting. But then I would just add like some actual spices, like cinnamon, a tiny bit of nutmeg. I would fill up my pot all the way. And then I might add my colloidal silver. So I'm getting my good, um, colloidal silver in my water that's going to be released into the atmosphere and I'm going to add frankincense because that's an essential oil that I can 
um, tolerate. Now, I'm not using my top and middle notes with this because I've got my citrus in here, I've got my cinnamon in here, so I have other um, natural products. I have food in here that's giving me that natural uh, smell being released into the air. <laughs> this is gonna be something you wanna eat. Um, but what I have found is that in the winter time, because we're running the heat, the air dries out. So I like to keep some the moisture in the air. And so now I'm adding my olive to the, the water as well. This is great for when someone's tired and they need energy. So that's just another way that we can get essential oils into the air without them being overpowering. We just add them to our water. We are using things that we, like the, Like I said, we're just using the scraps of something and adding a little bit of spice, a little bit of essential oil that doesn't bother us. You don't have to buy a big diffuser. You've got your stove top. You can just let that go while you're home. Don't leave it running. Don't leave your stove on when you leave the house. But while you're there, that puts a beautiful smell in the air. So if you've enjoyed these tips on how you can use your diffusers um, without essential oils or use your diffusers with just a little bit of essential oil so that you're not overwhelmed by the smell, please be sure to subscribe like and click the bell so that you receive notifications when our next videos are, are released. We have a lot more coming your way. Thanks for joining me at Sweet Urban Living.